But there is an important thing. So if you find the probability density function So score T, E, F. I can describe, I can define the probability density function. I'll ask small f, x of x. Uh, f, x of n of x. And it equal to the derivative of the chemical s. Of the so chemical n of x. Okay. So if you see this thing here, what that gives us is for that all equivalently, we can write something more effective for is I can write f of x times x and dx. Then is simply equal to the probability. So that is the probability, right? A probability of I have a random variable x, a random variable that I don't know what it is, but I know that the chance that is less than or equal to x less than x plus uh, Okay, let me rewrite this. Now space. This is important for me. F x of x dx is equal to the probability of uh, x less than or equal to capital X less than small x plus dx. Okay. So it's helpful to draw our diagram. The figure here. So now what this function look like? So maybe this thing will this is f x of x. And again, I'm going to describe this function. This is a random variable. I don't know what it is. But I can describe it precisely using this function, the PDF of that variable. And what effectively we have is from x to x plus dx. So in a very small interval here, then this is going to be roughly constants, right? It's about fx and fx being that area here, and that area is telling me what is the chance of that random variable, the probability of that random variable within that interval. Okay? So you see that. And by taking the integral here, you see that using the first theorem of capitals. You can help us. Okay, so that is the example. Well, that is the precise description of a random variable. Okay? And, and so far, I have one random variable, but similarly, <coughs> similarly, if now I have a, not just one, but several random variables. Uh, then we can define define uh, there is a distribution function that now we can define the, the joint the joint uh, distribution function uh, for example of f f now of x and y of some variable x and y so now, for example, I have not just one random variable, I have two random variables that I can define by what is the probability what capital X less than or equal to small x and y less than or equal to small y. So that joint event. And then the two random variables now is jointly described precisely with you. And I can take the derivative and so on. Okay? How many that that's okay so far? All right. So after we have that, then we have a random variable, and it's still so I have a random variable, a random function, 
a random brand of soy. You can't have you can realize that it's so like I have a coin, right? I can throw the coin up and down. I can throw the coin up and down. And anytime I can either I have a hand or tail. Have a hand or tail. And one way to describe all of this is the what happened, right? So that, that would be a long time. But the other time, thing I can describe it gives you a similar now is let's say I throw that coin and 50% of it the time, half the time, it gives me head, another half the time to tilt it. So that gives me a something similar probability density function. Okay? And that, that's what it is. So, given that we have a iso distribution function or the probability density function, we can compute a something by a simple because now I can describe the whole thing here by one, one number now. So the definition of that I can define the expectation. The expectation here is I can define what is the expectation of that random variable. So I have this random variable and have different value along the real axis. And now we want to see, okay, what is the mean expectation of that random variable? Then we can define it simply the integral of x times f x of x means. And it's grown out, even though I'm going to do later on without putting the limit, but you know that it goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So again, you look at this figure. X is this point here, or you know, we have to do an interval here, telling you the probability that random variable fill within this interval. And having that value. So now you take the integral of that value expected by this probability and take the integral to the mean. Okay, so that's how we define. And similarly, I can define the expectation of other function, right? Other function. Um, and put it the lemma here. Or well, maybe I can put a simple or fact. But it's very easy to write out here. It is now if I take an expectation, if I have two random variables, alpha, uh, I have two random variables, x. What I'm saying here is the expectation, if you call it right in this form, is simply a linear. It is linear in the sense that if I have two random variables, then I can easily put the alpha of the expectation of x plus the beta of the expectation of 1. And I have two random variables follow the same probability. No, it can be different, but the expectation of this two equals the linear combination. Right. If you want, that's a good exercise. Alright, so I do have that one. And so far, I can only describe one random variable. I have one random variable. Now what I want to do next is I define the behavior of not just one random variable, one sample. But now I want to describe them for one signal. Okay, so the signal as we have, the signal. Okay, so signal, a signal is, I have a signal x, 